going back, uh, I'm sure a lot of people that that watch the Sonic Truth podcast have been playing Dynasty, been playing fantasy for five years, ten years, two decades plus, and the edge in fantasy football used to be information. If you were able to, like, there was pe- nine nine people in your 12 person league didn't know who the second running back was, who the third wide receiver was on their team. If you knew depth charts, if you knew information going back to your two decades ago, you actually had an edge in your league now. You know, they make the joke that Bob in accounting, right? He knows who the, the fourth wide receiver is. Every information is a commodity at this point. So what you're trying to do here is actually find where the edge is. And what we mean by edge, I mean, everyone thinks we hear that word a lot is, what's the advantage that you could have that most of your league's not going to have? So, I mean, let me ask you that question. What do you think the edge is in fantasy football in 2023? I think it comes down to value. I think that there's so we get so caught up into rankings and tiers. It's a big thing. But at the end of the day, there's certain players that just break fantasy. It happens every single year. And being able to identify that upside in like round six through 10, I think is the most important thing. We're seeing every single year, we're seeing these league winners come out of this range of the draft. You know, we saw Debo Samuel and we saw Jamar Chase in 2021, Stefan Diggs in 2020 last year with Josh Jacobs come out of this particular range where if you can nail these rounds and, and I think that we get so caught up into positions, I want to nail the best possible scoring outcomes from these, this range of the draft. So for me this year, as good as we get at ranking, as good as we get as at predicting every single year, the values still fall into this range. It's, it's just a no brainer. And I think the other real edge you can get, is being able to identify mispriced teammate situations. You see it every single year, Alan, where these guys are taking a teammate ahead of another teammate, and maybe the consensus moves a guy up for no reason, and then all of a sudden you get Cooper Cup Robert Woods in 2021, where Woods was going ahead of him, and and Cup wins everybody the the league. So I think those two are, are really... I just want to stop you there. Like, do you remember that Robert Woods yeah. was going ahead of Cooper Cup in the fifth round or fourth round of fantasy drafts? It it was so obvious, but yet ADP did not adjust. That that happens every year. That is such a good point. The same year, Brandon Ayuk was going ahead of Debo Samuel, and last year we saw the enthusiasm where Elijah Moore, you know, and and that's one that I I got wrong. Like I was all over Elijah Moore last year. And Garrett Wilson was just sitting there as a higher pedigree player. Rookie, you could, you could understand, though. It's a rookie. Yeah. You, you, you kind of understand. But Woods and Cup had been around for five years plus, you know. It was, And the other uh, situations, your name. Th- this would be, I'm going to add on to what you said here. And this is a, a redraft-centric uh, uh, question, but you could use it in your dynasty league. Oh, dynasty, dynasty the, like, using, using redraft to your betterment in dynasty this time of year is also another edge you can have. Like every single year you see certain guys get steamed up in redraft that are poor bets to make in dynasty. Who would be How an example manage- of that? Who would be in re- last, either? Yeah. So I'll say last year there was a ton of steam around Cortland Sutton mm. and a ton of steam around Gabe Davis. You saw a lot of people just on principle cashing out on Gabe Davis. I'd never had a ton of Davis in dynasty, but you saw a lot of cash outs. I was able to cash out on pretty much all my Cortland Sutton stock last year using redraft ADP as a dynasty manager using underdog ADP and seeing these guys that are really, really steaming up and steaming up to like the artificial elite tier where you see guys starting to touch the third round, touch the fourth round, touch the second round. And those are the kind of guys you can cash out on. I think that's that you can absolutely use as an edge in dynasty. Yeah. And what makes a dynasty league different from redraft? It's the way we value the same players. Yeah. For example, Keenan Allen is a third round pick in most redraft leagues. Keenan Allen is a, a seventh to ninth round pick in dynasty leagues. Same player, different value. I mean, you can go into age or situation, whatever it is, but that's really the difference. So where I think the edge is in dynasty leagues is taking the redraft rankings and looking who has the biggest chasm in ADP and using that to find value. So, you know, I mean, and we always say dynasty, is this guy going to be good for the next five years? I mean, we could all be dead in five years, Theo. So I think that you, you, you know, you hear a lot of fantasy analysts and wisely so say play dynasty in one to two year windows. Think about how average we are at predicting what's going to happen in the uh, fantasy season ahead of us. Try predicting it two and three years out. 
there's very few guys. Sure, Patrick Mahomes could be predicted three to five years out. But other than that, man. We've talked about this in terms of theory. Like in certain dynasty startups, how many people are actually going for it in year one? Sometimes you get into a league and you see only like three people really, really pushing it in. You know, you could potentially have an edge there and being a win now team just based on watching how people are trying to build so hard for the future. We we do this year round, right? And this is the other thing that I found over time is that your thoughts, your process, your your player takes that you have in April and May, those are probably better than the ones you have in August because you've been poisoned by yes. the fire hose of of hey, these seventeen players are gonna be the best sleepers. You can't miss. try to not let all of the fire hose of news that uh, and takes that Theo just identified poison your mindset. If you go back to your May rankings, they're probably going to be better when we draft in, in August and September. Yeah, it, and a lot of times the like the the guys that get steamed might be getting steamed for wrong reasons, and then you see the like the the group think the whether it's dynasty, whether it's redraft, you see people start to see like maybe a couple of sharp people all agree, and then everybody's on that one take. And that, then that creates the artificial values, and then it, you end up in bad situations. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. If you like right. that video, be sure to subscribe and activate those alerts so you get notified as soon as new videos drop. And be sure to check out playerprofiler.com. We have all the tools for you to dominate every type of fantasy league. We have a draft kit, Dynasty Deluxe, Data Analysis, DFS Dominator, and don't forget the player rankings to rule them all.